open your mouth and tell the Lord, I'll never give up. Never give up. I'll never give up. Jesus name we pray Heavenly Father we thank you because we know you are still on the throne and you control our lives our lives are not in the hands of the devil our lives are not in the hands of demons our lives are not in the hands of mortal men like us not in the hand of even a Christian or in the hand of even a Christian leader our lives are in your hand we have committed everything to you and we know that every life committed into your hand will do good will do well will prosper will succeed will be victorious will be more than a conqueror in jesus name i pray lord that for everyone here this morning the unlimited blessing unlimited dominion unlimited power unlimited assurance unlimited authority unlimited joy you will give to everyone in jesus name i pray lord the spirit that conquers and the spirit that never gives up you'll give to everyone brother sister here today in jesus name lift up your people again let them keep on going higher and higher and higher in the lord in jesus mighty name we pray and everybody said, yeah. God will bless you today. Yeah. We're looking at John chapter 10, verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Have you ever noticed that there are situations when there is a loss somewhere and then the government of that country because maybe it's a natural disaster and it's a great loss that has come on individuals and families then the government will come in with a kind of program that they will supply the basic needs of the people that have lost something in that disaster. There is something here for you to understand. The thief came. And when the thief came, he stole. And after he had stolen, then our Redeemer came. Everything that had been stolen, he restores back to you. And then he came to kill and to destroy. And Jesus, the Savior, the Lord, the Redeemer, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords, he said, I know the thief has been there. And I know he has brought his agents and messengers and courts of death to afflict you, to kill and to destroy. I am calm. Where there is death, I come with resurrection power, resurrection life. And I'm come to give you life. And I will give you the life more abundantly. I learned something here. Whatever the devil has done, the Lord is able to reverse everything that he has done. If he has come with sickness, with oppression, with attack, with affliction, and he has come with even premature death, here the Lord comes and he comes with life, spiritual life, eternal life. The God kind of life, an abundant life in the natural too, and then life more abundantly. Tonight, this time we're talking about the unlimited life. The kind of life that Jesus has come to give you today is that eternal life, unlimited life, abundant life, satisfactory life, joyful life, a fruitful life, a successful life, and you will have it in Jesus' name. In Ephesians chapter 3 verse 19, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 19, it tells us, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that she may be filled with all the fullness of God, Christ's fullness in us, Christ's fullness in us. And then he tells us in John chapter 1, verse 16. 
John 1, 16. Of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. The fullness of the Lord is so much. The grace of God is so much. And the love of God is so much. The provision from Calvary is so much that you cannot exhaust that fullness and the provision of grace. The unlimited life. And Christ's fullness in you, in me, in us. There are three points we're going to consider. Number one, the power of an unadulterated faith. The power of an unadulterated faith. Number two, perseverance with an undeniable faith. Perseverance with an undeniable faith. And then, number three, the possibilities of an unlimited faith. The possibilities of an unlimited faith. And this morning, if you can just listen to the watch of God and then you have unadulterated faith undeniable faith a kind of faith that will not accept no that will not accept a denial that you know the promises of God and that when God has said yes in his promise he never can say no if there is a denial if there is a no coming from somewhere you know that is the devil trying to play his trick again. And you are not going to yield to the devil. You are not going to give up to the devil. Once you have determined what you want to pray for, know that it is the will of God. And once you open your mouth and you say, I know this is the will of God for me. It's recorded in the word of God. This will bring pleasure to God. This will bring joy to the heart of God. And this will fulfill my joy. Once you settle that, open your mouth and speak to God. And then, never give up. And don't accept the sin has not come the first day and the second day. And then I jump to another prayer. What if the devil comes in the second prayer? Then I give up again. And then I go to the third request. And then what if the devil comes again? And he, and he knows he set a pattern in your life. That any time you pray and he tries to block your way for a day or two, you'll get fed up, you'll give up. And then you'll go to another request again. Once he knows the method and the strategy and the technique that always gets you to give up, he will keep on using that, that strategy on you because he knows that you will soon give up. You have developed that into a habit. But when you say, this kind of faith I have is undeniable. Before I pray, I think through and I meditate. I look at the promises of God. I look at the will of God. I look at the word of God. Once that is settled, I keep on saying it until it's done and it will be done. And you develop this unlimited faith that your faith can carry any load can move any mountain, can divide any sea, can heal any sick person, unlimited faith. Let's go to number one. The power of unadulterated faith. In James chapter one, James chapter one, reading from verse six, but let him ask in faith nothing wavering. Let him ask in faith nothing wavering. You ask in faith. What does that mean? You're asking in faith. There, is a, there are different kinds of faith. There are some people that are so self-conceited. They have faith in themselves so much. I can do anything. I can do everything. I can face any challenge. That's not the kind of faith we're talking about here. Other people have faith in men. I know my uncle. I know my cousin. I know my, I know my people. They will do this for me. And many times they fail. That's not the kind of faith we're talking about. We're talking about faith in God. The creator. Faith in God that divided the Red Sea. Faith in God that provided manna for the children of Israel. Faith in God that divided Jordan. Faith in God that brought the Jericho walls down. Faith in God that raises the dead. Faith in God that through the name of Jesus, even the dead can be raised. Faith in God with whom all things are possible. Pray with that faith that I believe my God. I trust in my God. He can do anything. He can do everything. 
if when you pray, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. In Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Reading from verse 6. And the Lord said, if he had faith as a grain of mustard seed. You see, it's not the size of the faith that determines the size of the miracle. It is just the genuineness of the faith. How do you know your faith is genuine? Well, I'm trusting in Christ that rose from the dead. I'm trusting in Christ that he cannot deceive me. I'm trusting in Christ. He gave his promise. He cannot deny himself. That's genuine faith. And when you have that faith, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. You give the command, and you stand there, and you stay there, and you see it fulfilled. Like this morning, for example, there is something in your life that you say, this will not go back home with me. And you look at it as a, psych as a sycamine tree, and you're saying, you will go, and it will go. I said it will go. In Romans chapter 4, Romans chapter 4, I'm looking at verse 16. Verse 16, it says, therefore it is of faith, that it might be by grace. It is of faith, that it might be by grace. And then he tells us to the end, that the, the promise might be sure to all the seed. The promise might be sure to all the seed. Will you allow anybody to tell you that it's only one kind of promise that will be sure to all the seed? Why would you say that the promise of salvation is very sure and very definite? And whenever you preach, because you are all preachers, whenever you preach and you give an altar call, and you say, come, he will not reject anyone. That's your own faith. You believe that every time you give an altar call, if that individual will sincerely come, if that individual will sincerely receive the Lord, that that individual will be saved. And there's never a doubt in your mind. You, and you are rejoicing. You don't know how they feel. You don't know what has been done. And yet you are rejoicing because you have faith that that promise will be sure to all the seed. Why do you so much believe that the promise of salvation will be sure to all the seed? Why don't you then transfer that same faith to healing? That when you stand up, you're a region overseer, you're a state overseer, you're a local pastor in the province or in the district or wherever. And then you have that assurance in you. Now, because you're a district coordinator, does that mean that when you give an altar call and people come forward, does that mean they will not be saved? Do we have to wait for our national overseer to come and give the altar call for a sinner to get saved? No. Everybody here, even our dear sisters, they believe that when they are having their women fellowship, if the women, the women preachers, the women leaders, when they give the altar call, the Lord is calling you now. If you come, the Lord will save you. You know, I've been listening to you when you give your altar call, whenever I have a chance to listen to you. I've never had any of you say if you come now, the Lord may save you. Have you ever heard that? No. You always tell them, the Lord will save you. You are very, very sure because, you know, the promise of salvation is sure to all the seed. And many people have been saved through your ministry. Why don't you then transfer that same faith to healing? Raise up your hand. I'm going to pray for you. And then you say, as I pray for you now, you will be healed. And they will be healed. And those who are having demonic attacks and problems, they, they come, and as I pray for you now, trust in the Lord. The Lord will deliver you, and the Lord will deliver them. And those who are having needs, they come to you. And then you say, well, don't worry about that. We're going to pray. And the Lord will definitely provide for you, and it will happen in Jesus' name. That the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. Who is the father of us all? I'm interested in this. Of the face of Abraham. Of the face of Abraham. What's the face of Abraham? As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before whom, before him, whom he believed. He believed. The Lord said, you're going to have a child. 
and naturally, physically, it appeared impossible. But he believed. That's the faith of Abraham. And now here I saw today, maybe there is something, there's a need in your ministry. There is a need in your family. And there's a need in your life. And then the Lord has given you the promise. And then you believe. Even God, who quickness the dead, that's the God he believed. He said, ah, this situation is not even as bad. And I'm believing in God who can go far beyond my expectation. Because he can raise the dead. He can quicken the dead. And then he says, and call us those things which be not as though they were. What does that mean? Well, you, you know the name was Abraham. Abraham, a high father. A great father. And you know, he didn't have any child. And then God said, I have changed your name. I'm interested in that. Lord, what's my name now? You are Abraham. What's the difference? Abraham? Abraham. Well, Abraham means father of many nations. And there's no single child yet. And father of many nations. At any time, God wanted to speak to Abraham. He'll say, hey, father of many nations. And he'll say, here am I. What are the nations? What are the children? Because he was calling those things which be not as though they were. Father of many nations, here am I. And then the child was born. And then God said, Father of many nations, here am I. Take that Isaac, through whom all the nations will come. Take that Isaac and sacrifice him to me, Father of many nations. So here, yes, here am I. Early in the morning he went and then Father of many nations wanted to kill and destroy and sacrifice the only child, the promised child. And then God said, stay, your hand. I knew you would say that. I knew you will raise up the child, even if I kill the child, because I am father of many nations, calling those things would be not as though they were. As we see one another today, will you please call one another by a new name? I said, call one another by a new name. Hey, don't, 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 don't say, oh, it's always like that, always sorrowful. It's always like that, it doesn't have any joy. Oh, so, you, why is so and so so sad? Well, you, you need to understand. He's been in that ministry, he's been in that area for so long a time, and there is no fruit. All these things that he's hearing, instead of encouraging him, he's bringing him down. He's a sorrowful man. Call them by a, few, a new name. I said, call them by a new name. Call your wife by a new name, and your husband by a new name, and your children by a new name, calling those things which be not as though they were. And God kept on calling father of many nations, father of many nations, and Abraham. So God used to the name father of many nations that he himself began to call those things which be not as though they were. That's the kind of faith that the Lord is expecting that you will have, and you have it already. I said you have it already. I am not talking to a non-believer. I'm talking to a believer. Because you are a believer. And what you believe, the Lord will definitely bring it to pass in your life in Jesus' name. Hey, don't allow the devil to call you by the old name. You know, I can, I can imagine Abraham, anytime, uh, any of his people, but you know, he was far away from his people. If his people had been around, you know what they'll be calling him? They'll be saying, Abraham, Abraham, you know, if you are too near these unbelievers, and you are too near these natural people, and you are too near these people that do not know, there is a new name. There is a new day. And there is a new blessing. And now we are calling those things which be not as though they were. If you are too near these ignorant people, they will be calling you by the old name. Don't allow anybody to call you by, a, by the old name. If they call you by the old name, don't answer them. I said, don't answer them. And what, you know, sometimes uh, our husbands at home, good, good husbands, but you know, they, they, they are getting unhappy and sad, and maybe there is a need in the life of, of the wife. And maybe it's a sickness or it's, you know, a particular blemish or whatever it is. And uh, my wife, let's pray together. The Bible says, if we agree as touching anything, that we ask of the Lord, he'll give unto us. And in the name of Jesus, my wife and I, we agree. This is done. And then we say, Amen. And my brother husband is happy for 10 minutes. 
And then something happens. And then the husband will call the wife by the old name. Sister Sickness, you are started again. Sister Cough, you are coughing again. And Sister Tuberculosis, huh? that thing is there again. Don't come and sleep with me tonight. Don't transfer your tuberculosis to me. Go and sleep in your room. If I need you, I will come. Man, why are you calling your wife by the old name? We have prayed already. The tuberculosis is gone in Jesus' name. Calling those things would be not as though they were. And don't allow your mother to come into the house and be calling your wife barren. I'll be saying, you are just here. You are just eating. Ah, Mama, please. We don't talk like that in this family. This, this is a new year. And this new language. And this is a new family. And my wife is not barren anymore. I said your wife is not barren anymore. Don't allow your junior brother. Don't allow anybody in your extended family. And come into your family. And be using the old name. The old, the old language. Because now, this year, every one of us, we will be calling those things, which be not as though they were. By the word of our mouth, we will bring blessing into every family. By the word of our mouth, we will bring blessing into every ministry. And the Lord will bless every one of you in Jesus' name. Who against to believe in hope that he might become a part the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be, and be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God's own belief, but was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. I am fully persuaded that you are going to succeed. I am fully persuaded that your joy is going to be full. I am fully persuaded that your strength will multiply. I am fully persuaded I will hear good testimonies about you. I am fully persuaded the devil will not bring you down anymore. Being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. The Lord will perform good things in your life this year. In number two, perseverance with an undeniable faith. Perseverance with an undeniable faith. That means I won't give up. I will not give up. This blessing I will have. And no matter what other people say, I'm not dealing with them. I have nothing. I have no business with them. My cousin, my relatives, the unbelievers, and the people that always come, they always have something negative to say. They always have something negative to pass on. And they all, they, they, they're still looking at us like it was the old year. They're still looking at us as, as it was like the old time. And they behave and they act and they look and they talk like they talked last year. Like they spoke to us last year. They, they have gotten used to oppressing us with their negative words. And they have gotten used to saying, hey, come here. I know that you cannot get up. Do you know that? Are you God? I know you will never get healed. How do you know? Are you God? I know you'll never come out of this. How do you know? Are you God? I have a relationship with God. I have an agreement with God. All that thing is of the past already in your life. I said it's of the past in your life. And it will never come again. These enemies and these Amalekites and Egyptians and all these negative things you have seen in the old year, you will not see them anymore in Jesus' name. Don't allow them to bring you back to Egypt or to bring you back to your old problem. Understand, it's a new day and it's a new experience and you will not remain the same anymore in Jesus' name. The Lord will be a wall of fire around you. And whatever is happening, there is nothing that can cancel the victory and the success that God has given you in this new year in Jesus' name. And you yourself be very careful that you don't allow the thoughts of last year and the ideas of the previous years to come into your mind again and tie you down because you are no more down, you are up. In Genesis chapter 32, Genesis chapter 32, I'm reading from verse 24. Genesis 32 verse 24, and Jacob was left alone and 
there wrestled the man with him until the breaking of the day. My brothers and sisters, please look up here. You know, if, if you were, and uh, this uh, personality, and you don't even know his name, and you don't know where he has come from, and you are wrestling together, the, the thought of last year, and the thought of previous year, uh, a devil has come, a demon has come, because angel, you will think that if he's a real angel of God, he cannot be wrestling with me. And then you will go to a wrong conclusion. Whatever is happening, put a positive interpretation. That this fellow, you know, if you think in the natural, you'll say, if this angel was sent to bless me, how will he be wrestling with me? If he was sent to add value to my life, how will he be wrestling with me? But you can change your mind, and you can change your attitude, and you can change your thinking. It's strengthening my spiritual muscle. It's making me tougher than I was before. It's doing this so that I will be... He, he wants to test my determination. He wants to test my decision. That's why he's threatening with me. The way you think about the events in your life, may actually promote you or prevent you from having the blessing of God. These personality came from heaven. They are wrestled in mind with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his tie. And the hollow of Jacob's tie was out of joint. As he wrestled with him, um, you, I know you've read this story before, but suppose you were, suppose you were, and this man, you don't know his identity because he was asking for the name later. You don't know where he has come from, and he's wrestling with you, and then eventually he even touched your thigh, and it came out of joint. Would you think you are going to have any blessing out of this experience, out of this struggling and wrestling? But Jacob said, the Lord told me to go back to the place I came from. And this personality has come and is wrestling with me. I don't know the meaning of all the details of everything happening tonight as this wrestling is going on, but I know this man will not go until I am blessed. And this Congress will not pass until you are blessed. Until you are joyful. Until the goodness of God is transferred into your life. And then he said in verse 20, he says, let me go for the day break it. Going what have you dropped since you came? What have you given since you came? You think I've been resting all night for fun, in vain? Uh -uh. I'm going to get something. I said I'm going to get something. I, but I said I'm going to get something. And he said, I will not let you go except thou bless me. I will not let you go except thou bless me. Uh, you know, even some of us, we're not like this, determined even with one another. And my dear brother, you go to the state of Assyria, and you're saying, uh, sir, uh, the Lord uh, said this, and I remember this is what you said earlier to you. I about this, I about this, and the state of Assyria says, okay, I understand, go your way, I'll see to that later. Thank you, sir. Then you go. After three months, you have not come back. After six months, you have not come back. And then the state of Assyria sees you after one and a half years. Ah, brother, did you not come to ask me at this particular time for this and that? How is it I didn't see? Ah, well, I just felt that when you are ready and when it's in your mind that you will call me. Ah, that's how you behave. Go back there and say, state of Assyria, remember yesterday? Ah, it was just yesterday. Ah, I said I should check up again. And then the poly, it, when you know this is the promise of the Lord and God is going to do this and you know that this year for you is a year of blessing there will be no delay I said there will be no delay and there will be no denial you have that faith in God undeniable faith that's why Jacob said I will not let you go except thou bless me and he said unto him, what is thy name? I will answer any question you ask me, but I'm waiting for the blessing. Keep on asking me the questions, I'll tell you, my name is Jacob. And then he said, thy name shall be no more called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, thou hast, thou hast power with God and with men, and hast prevailed as prevailed. Thank you very much. I can release you now. I have prevailed with God. I have prevailed with man. You know the man I want to prevail over? His name is Esau. 
And you have told me now, I've got my blessing. I prevail with God. I prevail with man. I release you. You can go. And then he went on his way. And when Esau met him, Esau had been changed. His enemy had been changed. Before you get home, your enemies are changed. Your enemies are transformed. And the people that wanted to hurt you, they are ready to help you now. The Lord will give you the blessing in Jesus' name. In 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. Undeniable faith. A faith, a kind of faith that never, never, never gives up. It tells us in 1 Kings 18 verse 41. And Elijah, they said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink. For there is a sound of abundance of rain. Think about that. They had been farming for three and a half years. And for these three and a half years, no dew, no rain. And now, Elijah had not even prayed for the rain yet, but he told Ahab, and he said, Ahab, you go. You can eat and drink now. Because there's a sound of abundance of rain. And now see it before it is seen. Before it becomes visible, announce it. Commit yourself. Commit your faith. And know that this is going to be, and it will be. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. Ahab believed Elijah. Get to the point that even unbelievers, even the husband of Jezebel, will believe when you speak. When you say, go and eat, there is a sound of the abundance of rain. Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Camel. And he cast himself down upon the earth. And put his face between his knees. That was his own physical expression and posture in prayer. And said to his servants, go up. Now look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and said, there is nothing. There is nothing. What kind of eye did you have? Put on your glasses. Go and see again. And then he went the second time, and the third time, and the fourth time, and the fifth time. And he kept on saying, there is nothing. There must be something. Go and see again. The sixth time, there is nothing. Go and look very well. And then he came back, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud. Out of the sea, like a man's sand. And he said, Go, go up and say to her, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. The blessing will come on you, it will rain down upon you, and you will not be denied in Jesus' name. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and the wind, and there was a great rain. Everybody say, Great rain is coming on you, it's coming in your house. Is coming in your ministry. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. And he gathered up his loins and ran before Ahab uh, to the entrance of Jezreel. I come to point number three. The possibilities of an unlimited faith. Possibilities of an unlimited faith. In Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. I'm reading to you from verse 23. Mark 9, 23. Jesus says unto him, If thou canst believe all things, how many things? I said, How many things? All things are possible to him that believeth. And do you know that you, as the Lord has increased your faith already? And your faith now is an unadulterated faith, undeniable faith, unlimited faith. Do you know that all things are possible for you? In your ministry, all things are possible for you. And you are not classifying yourself anymore. I'm just a teacher. I'm just a preacher. I'm just a leader. I'm just a, I'm just a this. I'm just that. You are not limited anymore. All things are possible to him that believeth. And that's you. That's you, my sister. That's you, my brother. In Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Jesus answering says unto them, 
Have faith in God in your ministry when you stand in the pulpit. Have faith in God when you see those sick people lying down there. Have faith in God when the barren ladies or the barren men, when they come to you, have faith in God when you are planning for the crusade and you are expecting some great things. Have faith in God when your accountant tells you, Sir, there is not much money for this program we're going to hold. Have faith in God when it appears they are telling you, It appears that the authorities of this community, they do not want the church to spring up and to grow in this place. Have faith in God. The destiny of your life and the destiny of your family and the destiny of that church where you are is not in the hands of anybody there. It's in the hand of God. I said it's in the hand of God. And in your own mouth, if you have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall save Whosoever shall, tell me out loud, whosoever shall say, what are you going to say this morning? With your undeniable faith, with your unadulterated faith, with your unlimited faith, what are you going to say? Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, you will not doubt in your heart. There must be a miracle planted in your life, in your ministry this morning. And every mountain, every hindrance in your ministry and in your family, you are saying to that mountain this morning, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And you believe in your heart that those things which you have said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. He shall have whatsoever he says. You will have whatsoever you say. You will have whatsoever you say. You will have whatsoever you say. Caleb said, we are well able. He had it. You will have it. David said, let nobody care or be afraid about this giant, about this Goliath. I will bring him down. He had what he said. You will have what to say. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, Nebuchadnezzar, go ahead. You want to throw us in the fire? Go ahead and do what you want to do. If you do that, our God is able to deliver us. He had what he said. You will have what you say. Peter said, silver and gold are buying on. But what I have, I give unto you in the name name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. He had what he said. You will have what you say. I said you will have what you say. You are rich, you are not poor. You will have what you say. You are strong, you are not weak. You will have what you say. You are well, you are not sick. You will have what you say. You are a success, you are not a failure. You will have what you say. God's miracle power will walk through you. You will have what you say. Stand up and say it. Stand up and say it. Stand up and say it. You are not a failure. You are not a defeated one. You are not a victim. You are not a child of the devil. You are the son of the king. You are the daughter of the king. You are successful and you are prospered. And the work of God will prosper in your hand. There is a miracle word in your mouth. There is power. There is authority in your mouth. You will remove every mountain. You will remove every hindrance. You are not weak. You are strong. You are not weak. You are strong. You are not a failure. You are a success. You will have what you say. This mountain in your ministry. This mountain in your ministry. It will go. It will go. It will go. That thing that has been hindering you. That thing that has made you a victim. It will go. It will not remain. You will have what you say. You will have what you say. You will have what you say. Call yourself by a new name. Call yourself by a new name. Call yourself by a new name. You are not brother weakness. You are brother strength. You are not brother victim. You are brother victor. You are not sister failure. You are sister success. You will have what you say. You will have what you say. Unlimited life. The fullness of Christ in us. And the fullness of Christ in your life. You succeed. You conquer. You are an effective preacher. Don't tell me you are not an effective preacher. You are an effective preacher. You are a successful preacher. And you are a conquering preacher. The work of God in your hand, you will do it. Don't say I cannot. Don't say I cannot. Don't say I cannot. You will. You can. You must. You will do it. My dear sister, God has placed you there. He knows you. He has called you. Every gift you need, every grace you need, He will give unto you. You will have what you say. You will have what you say. 
You are not sorrowful. I'm joyful. I'm happy. I'm not sad. I'm glad. The Lord is on my side. He has provided for all my need. The need of my family. The need of my ministry. He has provided. I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. You will have what you say. When I pray, God will answer. You will have what you say. When I say to this mountain, Be thou removed, it must go. You will have what you say. I'm strong, I'm not weak. You will have what you say. I am a victor, I'm not a victim. You will have what you say. When I preach, sinners are going to be converted. You will have what you say. When I preach, believers are going to be sanctified. You will have what you say. When I preach, Holy Ghost power will come on my congregation. You will have what you say. The Lord will provide for us. We will build our district church. We will build our region capital. We will build our state capital church. You will, you will have what you say. Our church is not poor. The tithes will come in. The money will come in in our church. This year, our church is not poor. Our church is not poor. I am not poor. My family is not poor. You will have what you say. The government will not hinder us. The government will support. All the people that need to support, whatever project, they will be available they will support you will have what you say any hindrance there any difficulty there any mountain there speak to that mountain and let that mountain move away wipe your tears away be joyful in the lord you are more than a conqueror you are more than a conqueror in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray you will make a covenant with the Lord. You will not think the old thoughts. You will not say the old word. You will not call your wife, your children, the members of the church and your local church by the old name. And you will not call yourself by the old name. All the negative things you've been saying about yourself, you will not say them anymore. You are a new man. You are a father, spiritual father of many. The Lord has blessed you. The blessings of God will be abundant in your life. And as you walk about, you'll be walking in the blessing of God. Whenever we hear about you, we'll be hearing testimonies of God's miraculous dealing with you in your church in Jesus' name. You are no more a victim, you are now a victor. And you are more than a conqueror. That problem in your church that you left behind and you have come here and your heart has been heavy, throw away your sorrow. Throw away your grief. Because right now the Lord has solved your problem. There is joy and laughter in your family. The reason for clapping will never leave your ministry. You will clap and other people will clap. Amen. Put on those, put up uh, those uh, victorious anointed hands. Those hands you lay them on the sick, they are going to recover. The power of God will never cease in your life. Now, be very careful as you move around what you say, because now your word, the word of your mouth, now carries authority. There is a new power in your word. There is a new authority in your word. When you speak to your wife, good, good things, it will be established. You speak to your husband, your children, it will be established. When you stand on the pulpit and you open your mouth, be careful what you say because your word carries authority. Don't allow the congregation to die in the wilderness. Just tell them we're going to Canaan your people will get there Amen. and you will get there Amen. all the abundant provision you need to get there the lord will give to you Amen. this year will be a year of success and gladness Amen. father in the name of jesus Amen. we thank you because you have given us the unlimited faith and the undeniable faith and the unadulterated faith we come to you in that faith and we pray every brother here every sister here march on into your victory in jesus name 
every mountain in your life, every mountain in your family, every mountain in your ministry, I command them, come out in Jesus' name. Any sickness and any weakness, any infirmity in your body, I command, come out in Jesus' name. Any problem, any curse, any yoke on you, on your wife, on your children, I command, be broken in Jesus' name. Any negative word that anybody has spoken, anywhere, whether in church or outside the church, in a shrine or in a temple, from relatives or from enemies, any negative word that has been working in your life, that anybody spoke, I cancel them in Jesus' name. Your days of tears are gone. Your days of defeat are gone. From this moment, I proclaim the victory of the Lord and the victory of the cross and the victory of resurrection in your life in Jesus' name. In your personal business, you will prosper. In your spiritual work in the church, you will prosper. In your desires for yourself, for your wife, for your husband, for your children, it will be established. You are leaving this Congress and you are going into victory and you are going into success every mountain will clear away from your sight in jesus name no more hindrance in your way no more defeat in your life now you are victorious now you are more than a conqueror and every request you open your mouth in this congress and you ask the lord the lord has done it in jesus name you will live to see the goodness of the lord I pray that the Lord will give you the assurance in your heart. Things are not the same anymore. A new bright day has come for you. And you will enjoy your ministry. You will enjoy your fellowship with the Lord. And you are not down anymore. The Lord has raised you up. Every day, every step, there will be blessings in your life. And you are not only you receive blessing, you are also sharing the blessing. Anytime you stand on the pulpit, anytime you stand before people, you will be a blessing to people. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.